Hello, welcome in. Get out of the cold. Um, remember, shoes off at the front door. Get some snacks and come take a seat um, and join us here in the music shack with both Ray and Jack. Got a lot, no, not so much to talk about this week, but it's um, we've got three topics and they're all very important. <laughs> um, and mm-hmm. Ray's gonna Ray's gonna start you with the first one. Okay, so. The first one is very important to me. (laughs) Um, Macy's second album, The Good Witch, came out on Friday. So I think that every time an album comes out that's important to me or Jack, we'll listen to it on on our own kind of thing when the album comes out because we have no patience to do, like, reactions. Maybe sometimes we'll do reactions, but, like, if we're, like, both up at the time and able to, but, like... No. Okay. So we didn't do a reaction to it. We we were both on holiday. Like we had a busy week. I was. Here. I was literally sitting in a hotel bed listening to The Good Witch <laughs> for the first time, which is insane. <laughs> but anyway, we're here. It's Monday, June twenty sixth, um, today, and we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about The Good Witch, Maisie's second album. Her first album was "You Signed Up for This." Maisie's second album she wrote mostly while she was twenty two. Um, we love twenty two yeah (laughs) and 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 like i feel like the album is like as a whole after listening to it i i didn't know what to expect because her singles kate's brother and and not another rockstar and stuff were so different sonically from you signed up for this and i was wondering like what direction like Maisie's second album would go in and it felt a little bit more poppy for sure and I think that has to do with her going to Sweden and working with those, like, those people in Sweden who, like, have made some incredible pop hits. But um, I don't think it's bad. I think that they're incredible songs. Most of them are going to be fun to sing live. I think, unlike anybody else, I feel like what Maisie's power of, like, telling a story in a song is what I love about her. And what she's done with this album is, like incredible to me how she told like a complete story even though she has she did say on twitter that like a lot of the songs are about different people but it felt like if you listen to the album without that knowledge it felt like a complete story sharing what a heartbreak is from the start to finish and like she started of like this like oh like i wish i was better i wish like you know and then she, like, realized, like, no, fuck you. I am me, and I'm, like, living for this moment, and that's okay, and I'm going to let go of this man. And As it's just, should. like, such a beautiful, like, transition from, like, heartbreak to anger to, like, e- empowerment, and then finally, like, acceptance, which I think is, like, such a beautiful story to tell within an album. Like, I think... I don't know what you think, Jack, but I feel like the album feels like a complete piece. Yeah, um, I think, like, the first day it came out, you were saying how, like, I think that was one of the first tweets I read, like, it was um, about how it's, like, the perfect, like, cycle. And I I was before thinking, like, the album came out. Obviously, we've seen a lot of deluxe albums and stuff come out recently, and um, that seems to be the way, like, the trend is right now. Like, the the whole, um, like, release album, wait a little time for it to like kind of still do well but like then drop off a little bit and then release the deluxe to get the hype back so i was wondering if that would be the same case here but i i almost feel like it doesn't need a deluxe like i feel like it's perfect yeah like it's and i mean i wouldn't be complaining if we got a deluxe because i'm sure there are songs that Maisie wrote that were meant for this album that were left out of the Mm. album that i would love to hear um yeah. but i don't feel like it needs a deluxe like when remember how we were saying last week about how like good riddance it felt like it needed deluxe to like complete what actually would have been the album yeah and i i don't like that tactic i mean i get why they do it but i don't i don't love doing that i'd love to when an album comes out i want to hear and if there's deluxe tracks to me they're just like little extras they shouldn't yeah. be part of like the story that the album kind of wants to tell what we're gonna do and we'll do this with all the albums that are coming out soon so like speak now tv and stuff we'll go through track by track the episode after the release Mm -hmm. um day and like what our thoughts are so the first track is the good witch and i absolutely like 
the first time I heard this song and I just heard the first lyrics like still upset but now i'm 22 i just started yeah. tearing up because i was like oh my god <laughs> like there's no way that's how macy's opening this album yeah. like this this like insanely obvious parallel <laughs> to you signed up for this <laughs> there's so many in this album i know and it's, it's just, crazy i love that it's just like i don't know i i think as you said like it's just to instantly start it up like that it's just kind of like a it's not a like I hate the fans it's like just it's one yeah. of those things that you just put in and it just I don't know it just kind of makes it like go so well from being like obviously you signed up from this to like if you're listening them to them after one another like I feel like it yeah. then just transitions really well um yeah but it was um yeah it was a good start I need to chime in and be like see the the black keys ad lib after she says eh, still doesn't play the black keys oh it's so whimsical like it just like it's it gives so it such like amazing. a witchy tone and i love it i don't know why but it's just like perfect oh i love it so much and i just love the melody in the song i feel like it's it's definitely a song that like it's perfect as an opening track in my opinion i think without the context of the album it's kind of like okay <laughs> but yeah. With the context of the whole album, it's like, oh my god. <laughs> I, like, that is insane. I I don't know. And she, she's like, she's, she's talking to us and being like, this album is for you. And, like, enjoy it. And, like, this is, this is a piece of my life I'm giving you. And oh my god and at the end when the when the outro when the voice come in like and all these people yeah i was trying to figure out like see when it was going like yeah playing through and i was like who is that but she did confirm it i've got the list up here so oh you do in order it was <laughs> yeah i'm prepared i was searching up where you were talking about it i just remembered it you're so um prepared. was abby stewart jack tina tina bot let's go i'm a i'm a tina bot loud and proud kate is it in it? I, I, I can't pronounce it, pronounce the name. Ines. Ines, yeah. yeah. Jess, Dom, Vera, Joe, Greta, Hannah. Iconic. Because it does just sound like a big jumbly name. Like jumbly voices. I know. It sounds like a big jumble of voices, but I know to, to Maisie, like, it must mean a lot. Yeah. And, oh my God, those people, like, incredible. Like... Iconic. I think if you're, if you're a long-term Maisie fan, you probably know who all those people are. At the very end, there's the part that goes, like, it's the crowd chanting Maisie so like she goes you want to hear yeah. from all the people in my heart and then there's all those people's voice notes and then the last one is you know the crowd like her fans like those are also the people in her heart and I think cute. that's really cute I wonder what song she what, um, <laughs> what show she recorded that uh she said that it was at the New York Webster Hall show so that's fun if you were there you are in a Maisie song I was not there because Ooh, I'm should have been poor Edinburgh. and I can't go to New York <laughs> the the good witches are already recorded by then but yeah <laughs> yeah true, true, but still, I'm, I'm marking up i think it's i still think it's like such a cute concept yeah. and i i kind of like i don't know if she's gonna play the song live but i feel like she should it should be like the intro track before she comes on stage and then we all get to yes. chant Maisie, 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 and then she comes on and she sings like whatever the first song that will is be. such a good idea body better probably i don't know that'd be cute it'd be fun <laughs> Okay, so the next track is Coming of Age, track two. Um, oh, I forgot to say for The Good Witch, it was produced by Joe Rubel, who's did a lot of the You Signed Up for This stuff, so it's kind of cute. Done. That's kind of cute. Yeah. Uh, Coming of Age is produced by Elvira, um, so it has that Swedish influence. Um, Elvira, famous for ruining girl at home. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I'm just going to leave the room. I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave the room. That's, that's good on TikTok. That's um, good luck, Bray. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um. Anyway. <laughs> um. Okay. So, <laughs> I feel like this song is like so incredible. She's like, she's kind of ref. She's almost reflecting a little bit and being like. I feel like it's it's almost like the opening track of the album if we didn't have The Good Witch, you know? Like, The Good Witch is perfect opening track, but this is, like, 
it sets the tone for what the album is going to be essentially yeah um she says like she's talking about this guy and about how like you know this isn't about you but like i made it about you but it's no no it's about me like and i i just feel like that's such a big like theme of the album yeah it's kind of like we like obviously the whole album is like kind of talking about like the heartbreak and then you like cycle of that and then so i feel like the whole album there's like parts to each song that kind of like throws you into the mindset of it really where i feel like this is kind of that that whole that stage where you sort of feel like not insane but it's like you never you don't really know if you're coming or going so i feel like it's that's yeah. why it's like so choppy mm-hmm. i feel like this album like this song on first listen i it took me aback i was like mm-hmm. oh my god what is happening because the good witch felt like almost similar sonically to like what i would expect and then this was like whoa yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit different yeah. um but Maisie said, but like after listening to it like so many times with the album and everything, like it's just like the the shock of the first listen has definitely like I, I don't have that anymore, and mm. the song has grown on me so much. I am so excited to scream, "Baby, I am the Iliad." Of course, you couldn't read me live. That's gonna be incredible. <laughs> <laughs> this like whole album is gonna be such a good Aww. like. You can album. tell that this album was written to be sung live, like hundred percent. It's gonna yeah. be insane, and and you know that because she wrote most of this album on tour, so she probably yeah. was thinking about that as well. The only last thing I have to say about this is that Maisie said today in the Discord listening party that this song was inspired by Supercut, like the the sonics of it. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> I love Supercut, <laughs> and now that she says that, I can totally like see the parallels of the sonics between supercut and coming of age like and i absolutely love that <laughs> yeah oh my god yeah i'm gonna go let back and listen to it now that i know that after this yeah i'm gonna listen to coming of age and then supercut right after i feel like that would be fun <laughs> okay next is watch produced by oscar gors again swedish influence and i i think this song Oh my god, I love this song. <laughs> this song, it was one of my favorites on first listen. I was like, the drums in it. Oh, I love the drums in it. Mm-hmm. Um, all of like, just I don't know. I I just feel like it was just incredible, and it was just like, it was like this part of it. Kind of describes this part of heartbreak where you're just like, you're just like over it. You're just like I hate this guy and he it looks because when you it doesn't you don't know what's happening but when you look at social media it always looks like someone else is doing great and you're not and so you're just like i'm heartbroken and i have to watch you do everything that you've ever wanted you know yeah Uh, that's that's yeah (laughs) that's i'm just looking at my notes as well and that's that's kind of what i wrote um, is like just yeah. putting on a face trying to prove uh, to everyone um, that you're alright while constantly seeing like what your other half or ex is up to and you feel like they're every yeah. photo or everything they put online is like them being happy and you're just constantly questioning why you're not there yet but we're so like our brains are just so it's like we would listen to the same song or something <laughs> I'm this is also one I'm really excited about live um, yeah. but yeah that'll be fun body better Okay, so obviously Body Better was a single, so we know this song very well. Um, I feel like it links to Watch, though. Like, the the linkage between Watch and Body Better is, like, incredible to me because it's, like, you have this girlfriend and I have to watch her and now I have to... And then right after I have... I'm, like... And, like, that makes me angry. And then it's, like, well, that also kind of makes me sad because she's so much better than me and she's good for you and i'm not and how how could have i like it's like that doubt that comes after the like anger Mm -hmm. and like just like the parallels between like the concept is essentially based on the same thing like you're watching your ex date someone else and that sucks (laughs) and so i just feel like i i feel like that's kind of a cool track listing that like comes right after that 
it's like really interesting because obviously we obviously get these singles and then it's like try to place them in the timeline or like the set like where we think they'll go in like the album i feel like we, what we got um for singles was like they're all really was like where are they going to place but it does yeah. feel like very like fitting to be placed after watch it felt like all the singles were really different and i think that was on purpose because she tried to pick one single that kind of described each of the different sonics of the album mm-hmm. you know like lost the breakup and body better and then two weeks ago um and to like essentially tell her fans like hey there's something for you on this album because yeah. there's definitely fans who like certain sonics that Maisie does better than others so i think that was a good choice from her in terms of i think body better is like incredible and i think it was it, it deserved way more as a single but it's okay yeah no i agree with you okay the next is want you back which is oh i cry this is produced by joe i feel like it it ed sheeran plays guitar and has backing yeah. vocals on it as well which is fun <laughs> try to listen out for it I can't hear it as well as other people can hear it, but he is there. You can hear him pretty obviously in the bridge. I don't think he's there anywhere else. I think he's in the bridge. She says like a lot of stuff in this album, in this track, that's just like absolutely heartbreaking. Like, I want you back. I know that you hurt me. And I know that if I, like, I know that like, no, you're not good for me but i don't really care i just want you back i want to go back to that time where like we were happy together and i feel like that's such a common feeling after a breakup because you don't actually think about the reasons that you broke up you think about the reasons that you were happy together because that's what you miss right Mm -hmm. yeah and that's i just think it's like it describes that feeling perfectly i think that's it for want you back there's not like the lyrics are relatively straightforward so there's not much to break down but that's fun the band and i oh my god (laughs) (laughs) so i absolutely love this song i think for me it has like a lot of personal meaning because obviously I went, I'm wearing my You Signed Up for This t-shirt, but I went to the You Signed Up for This tour in North America. So I was there, like, I was literally there in person when Maisie was, like, experiencing all this stuff, which is kind of funny. And not funny, but it's also kind of cool, like, I, to feel like you relate to, like, a part of a song so much, even if Toronto wasn't, like, specifically mentioned, um, like, Philadelphia or Seattle or whatever um it's it's still quite fun and i think that that's so it's just such a special thing for me because i know what this song means for Maisie, but when i listen to it i'm gonna think about that tour and like that time of my life like being so excited to go on that tour and to go to that show and like being fucking freezing cold in the (laughs) queuing in in march in in canada and then like like I don't know. I'm just going to remember everything about it. And I, I feel like this song is so special to like everyone who went on that tour. So that's fun. Um, but anyway, it's also just like, it's such a personal song to Maisie. And I, what I love that Maisie does is she makes her songs so specific. Mm-hmm. And you can, there's a lot of specific stuff that's obviously like related to her, things that happened to her in the band and in the, in the track. But it still feels relatable to anybody. Like, you feel like you're living it with her. Yeah. And, like, oh, like, I listen to this song and sometimes I think about, like, oh, you know, like, when, like, I, like, go on trips with my friends and stuff and I'm like, oh, this song's kind of like that, you know? Like, I get to reminisce that, you know? Um, (laughs) And I feel like it's such a good reminiscing song. It's kind of cute. I love it. <laughs> the only comment I have is Jack needs more Riz. I'm sorry. I know. Like, come on. The next track is You're Just a Boy and I'm Kind of the Man, which yes. we saw live. <laughs> yeah, we did. I feel like this song reminds me of like seeing it live. It was just so fun. It's so fun live. Like, oh my God, just yeah. dancing to this song. I'm so excited for the Good Witch Tour. I'm going to die. Literally die. I get to see Maisie in August, which is like 
so soon <laughs> but i just love this song <laughs> i don't know what more to say than no, i love it you have something to say yeah i do have something to say <laughs> um in my notes i wrote instantly five out of five although loses so many marks because tina's cowbell was not louder <laughs> <laughs> For the people who don't know, when Maisie plays this live, Tina does the cowbell bit. That's what Jack's referenced. <laughs> I was listening out for it. And I was, yeah. I, I was like, could have been louder. Mm-hmm. But the song is a five Could have been louder. But that's only that's It's only incredible. Complete. Yeah. It's so so this track marks kind of the start of the like. I feel like from Watch to Body Better to Want You Back, it was like heartbreak. You know, yeah. this sucks. The band and I. In my opinion... The band and I is kind of in a weird place. Like, I don't know why it's there. Maybe it's there because it's like a transition. But this is, I feel like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know where you would place the band and I though. I feel like it's fine for where it is placed. Yeah. The band and I, I wrote originally, it was just like a, like a a, a moment like the band and I is where you're like, you're surrounded with people you love um, and like you're Mm -hmm. taken away from that like place mentally. So then you're. I feel like yeah. it's a good. Tra- I feel like it is it's, in a good place. I, it's it like is that transition from that and being taken away it's from like, it with friends it's and like, family and everything, and then uh-huh. like into this. It's like, like I'm so heartbroken right now, and I'm just reminiscing over you, and I can't get over that. And then I realize in the band and I, oh my god, like I am living the dream. Like I get to go on a world tour with my best friends, and that's so exciting, and get to experience all these new things, and you're just a boy and i'm kind of the man and you could be doing this with me but fuck you you're not (laughs) (laughs) and (laughs) and like i feel like this song is like incredible it's such an empowering song like i am doing good and you could be doing this with me but you decided to give this up so screw you (laughs) yeah they lost the chance so fun yeah could have been there exactly Oh my god, the transition from You're Just a Boy to Lost the Breakup. It's amazing. It is amazing. (laughs) (laughs) And the meaning of these songs just fit so well together. Like, I feel like they're the same. They're like, fuck you, I'm doing incredible, and you're not. (laughs) I just wrote Bad Bit (laughs) Cheater. That's literally what I wrote. Um, Because, yeah, it's just (laughs) one of the things, like... Oh yeah, like, God. I've won the breakup now, like... Side note, but, like, I don't know if you watched Maisie's set at Glastonbury. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But I did not realize how popular Lost the Breakup was. Like, I feel like the crowd was, like, vibing for her set and then Lost the Breakup. Like, everyone was singing and I was like, oh, my God, everyone knows this song. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's one of those songs, I think, genuinely, it comes down to, like, the... um. I feel like songs, see when you have like a specific thing per, that's so special per different shows, I think those songs always perform better. Like, so you have like yeah. Lost Breakup where you have like, oh, I'm in blah, blah, blah tonight or I'm at, I'm in, mm-hmm. I'm at Fallon's tonight or something. Um, things like that where like, same with like, not to com- not comparing, but like same with like Sabrina and Nonsense, I feel like songs that have a specific yeah. thing to do with a certain show are, are like, exciting. Yeah, and they're also like, a lot more i feel like lost the breakup the way it's like paced and everything as well is just something more for like charts um and yeah just like a lot more like widespread compared to our other stuff but it's, it's still good mm-hmm. it's like amazing song to like hear for if you hear Maisie for the first time through lost the breakup like i feel like that's a song where you're gonna be like oh yeah i really like Maisie peters yeah i i kind of i think i agree and i know that there's people who are like introduced to her from lost the breakup so that's fun the next song is wendy in my opinion wendy is where the second half of the album starts um like we told this story in the first half and like we're still continuing that story but this feels like a natural like chapter turn kind of thing but Maisie somehow decided that the first track on side b should be lost the breakup and not wendy which kind of annoys me (laughs) we don't get the you're just a boy to lost the breakup like transition if it's on side b (laughs) <laughs> like that sucks this song is an inspiration from peter pan obviously but it's also a really big thing of i i just want to read what Maisie said because i feel like i cannot word it better than she did um and she 
really explained what this song is. She said, the song is about being someone who wants to see the best in something against all odds and will and willfully blinding yourself to the truth because the magic feels better. It's also about yeah. paths in life and how you can look at one path and know there's a version of you that you can take it. But it's knowing that path isn't the right one and knowing when to make those sacrifices, even when not to make sacrifices, even though you want to and about drawing that line and putting your own future first. And I think that's such a beautiful and empowering message to think like, I am in this shitty situation with this guy who's like not for me and I, it would be easier to stay, but what about my wings? (laughs) And I just think that's such a beautiful message and I love it. (laughs) That's such a, like I've not seen or say that about it like the way you summed it up there um but that does sum it up perfectly i think like if first time listening for the song if you were to hear that afterwards you'd be like yeah i feel like i like it i i love like the magic little spells but i i don't know if you've listened to maybe you haven't because i know you're going to an acoustic show so you maybe want to be surprised um but she plays this song at her acoustic shows um and i feel like I like the acoustic version a little bit better. Okay. Um, I still like this version, but I feel like the acoustic version just hits harder. Um, and so I hope she does the acoustic version like on tour if she's going to sing this song live. This will be um, a sad. I've not listened to it because I do want to keep myself surprised. Like I knew it, it mm-hmm. was like a thing, but yeah, yeah. It, it, it does feel like it fits very acoustically. Um, and I'm yeah. kind of really excited to It'll... hear it. It'll be fun um, when you hear it. So I so can't wait to hear your reaction to yeah. that. <laughs> the next song is Run, which is fun. Run is probably one of my least favorite songs of The Good Witch. Yeah. Um, Don't Attack Me. Like, I know a lot of people love this song. I think maybe it's because I'm in a healthy relationship with a man. Um, but, like, I just, I don't know. I just, I just, like... I, I love I like it I think it's fun I think it's really like I just feel like the concept of it is very surface level so I'm like okay I don't know that's why I like Maisie because she's a good storyteller and I feel like yeah. this song doesn't do that for me not just hate on it like like I said I do love it it's a lot a lot of fun and I I don't it's not a skip but it's just like not my favorite <laughs> a lot of people like it I don't dislike it at all. It's not like I don't think there's any songs on this album that I dislike. It just fe- this song just feels a lot more chaotic, in terms of like the the pacing and like the it it but it also translates mm-hmm. really well the uncertainty of the whole like situation it's explaining, um and it's just like whole inconsistency and but it's like also like the anger and like the aggression it comes with it as well. Like it's such it explains yeah. the story so well. But I'm, mm-hmm. I, I like sadder and slower songs, and it just took me. I I like this, and I do listen to it. it. Just took me a wee little while to like get into the vibe. I feel like going from like other mm-hmm. songs in the album to go to this. Like if it, if the album's on shuffle, it's like a harder to like break into. But once it's on, it's like okay, yeah, singing along. Oh, it's it's good. Yeah, like I I agree, and I I think it's fun. I think it's kind of weird. So I think the placement of it's a little bit wrong. Um, so two weeks goes the next track yeah. to me two weeks ago is being like oh my god this man loves me and i miss him i want him to come back (laughs) and to me there's like a lot of parallels between run and two weeks ago like funny it's like this man says that he loves me and then run but then and i miss him and i i wish that i did better and then run is like this man said that he loves me and i shouldn't think that he i shouldn't think about how he left me i should just go like it doesn't matter anymore almost... and to me it think i think it should be swapped it's like yeah okay, that's the first nice. feeling you have is heartbreak and then the next feeling is like oh my god like fuck that guy i need to leave like i'm never letting myself do this again <laughs> yeah no that yeah so that's what i was gonna ask you i'd love to hear what she has to say about why she placed them like the other way around because I'd, I'd, yeah. I'd agree with you fully. So she said in the Discord listening party, um, let me just see exactly what she said. She said... Intermission while Ray's trying to find us. Stream the Good Witch. Um, so true. Stream the Good Witch. The feminine urge to give all your money to Maisie Peters. Do that. 
Yeah, I done that. Succumb to it. <laughs> um, anyway, what she said was two weeks ago after run is so evil and funny. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it does have a lot of parallels, but it's not not like that. Like they should be the opposite, in my opinion, but still a good song. Yeah, no, yeah, good song again. It's just, it's, yeah, I get, I fully agree with you. Next song is BSC, Batshit Crazy. <laughs> um, the amount of name drops in this song. Oh my God. Yeah. I screamed. And she's just like, she's essentially like, you broke my heart and you think that I'm doing just fine, but actually I'm batshit crazy. I'm writing all these songs about you and ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> and also, Graham not have me on the show. <laughs> iconic, so though. True. Yeah, that, it's so iconic. I, the fact that she literally said on Twitter, <laughs> "I only included that so that he would invite me." <laughs> like, that's so funny and iconic. Yeah. I want to see if he um, will. He oh, do. I feel like he will. It's definitely a song for the crazy girlies, yeah. and like. I mean, when she goes, I'm Little Miss Unstable, like, so true. Me too. (laughs) (laughs) My my note for this song was, (laughs) yes, 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 aggression, let's fucking go. (laughs) But it's crazy. This is so crucial. Everyone needs a a crazy phase. (laughs) Oh, my God. It's like, fuck (laughs) fuck yeah, let it all out. That that was the notes. (laughs) Oh. Moving on to therapy, <laughs> I like this song. Mm-hmm. I I think it's fun. I think it's it's fun, but it's also got this. I love the lyricism of "From Your Arms Back to Therapy." I just yeah. feel like that's such a fun line, and I know that like that's the the concept that this track was made off of. I I I when I read that the track title was called therapy i was like oh this is gonna be like a depressing song yeah you know? like <laughs> it was a depressing song but the the beat is like you know it's very poppy um so it, it, i it kind of took me by surprise but i still love it <laughs> yeah so we we were doing um when we got the track list we done like obviously the, how you usually do is you like claim a song and therapy yeah. was the one I claimed, and I had the yeah. same thought as you. I thought it was going to be like a lot slower and and sad. And it is sad. Like the lyrics are really sad. Yeah, they're um, sad. <laughs> and it's like and like in the bed of poison oak, you were the remedy and stuff. Like things like that are like so hard hitting and stuff. But it's just, it, mm-hmm. I'm so sad because I wanted it to be slower. I still like. <laughs> I'm just, I, I need a song slow, when so, I yeah, cry my yeah. eyes out in therapy. <laughs> yeah, but it is like, I still love it. And I still love um, that idea. I just wish it was a wee bit slower. But um, everything she talks about is very like, everybody goes through it. Like everybody has those thoughts. Um, and it's like the sad reality of like how you're perceiving like the moment you're in a relationship, like everything's going to be fine and you're not going to need to go back to therapy or you're not going to need to need that with me because we're going to be completely fine and we're going to, be there till the end but then it's like the next moment like they're gone and you're like kind of left there stranded i feel like it's such a it's a good message feel like a little bit therapy is good for you normalize it don't if you're going through heartbreak don't feel bad listen to Maisie and go back to therapy so true (laughs) um okay so the next track is there it goes this was this was the last song that Maisie wrote for the good witch and it really feels like that like it is incredible like i love this song because it feels like all of the heartbreak and pain she's been talking about in the album she's like you know what that's okay like i i accept that and i'm moving on like and this is my life and i'm there's so many personal (laughs) like if you're a Maisie fan there's so many little like tidbits of her life that you know of like when she's like Oh, Brick Lane and the Brisk Cold, or you know when she when she when she moved out of Girl's House and she's like a new home, a swan dive, a blank page, a rewrite, and so like, I just feel like this this song is like this is the end of this story and me reminiscing this heartbreak, and I get to move on now, and I think that's like beautiful, and it's such a beautiful message, honestly. I just love it. Like the cycle um, that we're talking about, it like. This is where it kind of tops off and it 
yeah, I feel like it couldn't have been mm-hmm. done any better. And the whole, I love that she always adds these like little um, like lyrics or like points in the songs where like fans can go back and be like, oh yeah, I know that moment or I know what she's talking about. Um, yeah. But it's it's something she's always kind of done, and she's been like very like it's cute different and it's very specific for her yeah right like it's not like she's just saying stuff it's like this is a specific lyric to her and to her life and to what she was going through at the moment and it it's very relatable Mm -hmm. regardless of whether you went through that specific thing and i just love that but it makes the story feel complete and one of my favorite lyrics in the whole album is sunflowers in the kitchen a heartbreak in remission the universe is shifting and it's all for me um just like the whole like you know it kind of describes like the power of friendship like i got through this uh, this heartbreak because of my friends and they're we do all this stuff together like yoga and i get flowers and they push me to just go on dates to get free coffees (laughs) and and (laughs) And because of that, I moved on, and that's exciting. And yeah, I don't know, it's just beautiful. <laughs> I yeah, love it. I the, absolutely love it. I've got the lyrics up in Genius just when we're going through them, um, and someone's yeah. added an on- annotation. It's um, it's uh, you can't see the name. It's anonymous, but um, and they've wrote this could be a reference to the album Opener of the Good Witch, where Maisie sings, "Make it a universe that you can live in." Um, the shift in the yeah. line signifies the relationship is over, and the speaker is finding peace and moving on from the heartbreak. Which is um, oh, yeah. that's so. Oh my god, I love that. That is such a good like. I wish I could. Um, can I see who it is? Somebody called Do Dohi Hastro. Definitely butchered it, <laughs> but um, that is such a nice way of putting it. So Maisie said in the Discord listening party that we weren't planning on doing the good. There it goes for tour, but after seeing all your comments, she says that we might have to iconic that is so, so fun. that's that's fun yeah um we might we might get to see it live now which i was kind of expecting that it would be one of the tracks that she wouldn't play live so that's fun that we might get it the last track and my personal favorite spoiler alert <laughs> is history of man and um there is a thread on twitter that analyzes this song in detail and every single bible reference in this song i am not an expert on these references so i don't want to speak on them and get them wrong (laughs) um so we will link that in the description you guys can read them they are exciting like lena um who made the thread absolutely incredible absolutely incredible so smart i could never <laughs> um so, so many daisies yeah doing that and there's so many good ones if you go on yeah, twitter so and look good. through like the the breakdowns and there's so many mm-hmm. like that one. and Ma- Maisie's repeated a re- repeated retweeted a lot of them so yeah. if you're looking for them just go on her page she's retweeted them so you can find it um so they're that's really great um but i just love this song because it essentially says like Look at all of these things that happened in the past where, like, women have always been, like, misunderstood or have been defined by the things that men did and have been heartbroken and betrayed and always been blamed. And that is the history of man. And I hate knowing that that is the history of man, that we can't change it. I'm trying. I want to rewrite it. I want my life to be different. And she ends in this like extremely sad note. Like the chorus and throughout the whole one is she stays up. She sleeps like a lamb. She loves him more than anyone. She begs him. He says he doesn't understand. She loves him more than anyone ever has. It's the history of man. And the last chorus, she changes it and says, I stay up. You're sleeping like a man. And it essentially just says like, I couldn't change the history of man unfortunately unfortunately yeah and and but then it says so you'll lose me the best you'll ever have which i think is such a high note to end the album and say like yeah you i stayed up and i did everything for you and i tried so hard to rewrite the things that have happened in the past since the beginning of time but 
you didn't do your part so you lost me yeah. and and like it kind of says this thing that like Maisie's gonna it, it I don't know I feel like as a woman for me like this song even regardless of anything it has a lot of meaning and it's just like she, she like heartbreak is in your faith I guess and it's like it's really hard to describe <laughs> but it's just incredible um, I don't have much to say on it because I am a man. <laughs> I am the problem. <laughs> but there's like so many just sweet and like beautiful lyrics in this. And it's like the start of the chorus is um, I've seen it in the poems, uh, in the sand. I've pleaded with the powers mm. and their plans. I tried to write it, but I can't. It's a history, history of the man. But then it's like songs like that, or it's like the chorus like that. Um, it's so beautiful. Yeah, or it's like he stole her youth and promised heaven. The men start wars, yet Tory, yet Tory. Then Troy hates Helen. Women's hearts are lethal yeah. weapons. Did you hold? Did you hold mine and feel threatened? And like, feel threatened. It's. It's incredible. Yeah. I, I, I just. Oh my God! This song is beautiful, and it feels like the perfect closer. It's like no matter what has happened in the past, and I think she makes all these biblical references. But I think about artists like Taylor. And what happened this weekend on the Irish tour when she was like, do not make, yeah. speak now about John Mayer because this is about me. It's my self written album and I want it to be about me. And it's like Maisie's thing of saying like, this is the history of man. Every single woman is looked up, looked at through a man's perspective mm -hmm. and is misunderstood. And I want, I don't want my legacy to be that. I don't want my legacy to be about the men that broke my heart or about any of those things. I want it to be about me. And if you don't understand that, then you'll lose me. <laughs> it's, and I think that's so beautiful. <laughs> it, it was one of the songs that I didn't really, um, like it didn't hit as much the first time because like it's such a mm -hmm. loaded song. So yeah, like it so took loaded. a couple lessons to be like, whoa whoa okay <laughs> whoa. Um, until you yeah. realize and like hear every single like reference and like every and what the whole message of the song is so yeah definitely like the more lessons i've garnered more of like a um a love towards it because i just didn't really like take it in at first not that i wasn't less than typical man thing but like um <laughs> <laughs> but it was just like i was on the train and i was just like breaking it down and i got the completely wrong meaning of it the first time um, mm -hmm. not the complete it's still kind of sounding the same fact but I was playing heavily or still on the breakup and the the cycle fact um, yeah but then taking it after like closing it and just taking it for like word and lyric by lyric it, it stuck more um, and it's yeah. yeah perfect closer and that is the good witch so we've been talking about this for a while yeah. but quickly Jack and I will go through our favorites and Jack will put our like ranking pictures on the screen maybe to help um, that'll be good yep. um so for me my favorite was history man my second favorite was watch my third was wendy fourth was band and i fifth was there it goes sixth was body better seventh was bsc eighth was you're just a boy and i'm kind of the man ninth was coming of age tenth was want you back eleventh was the good witch twelfth was therapy thirteenth was lost the breakup fourteenth was run and fifteenth was two weeks ago <laughs> So number one for me was the band and I, um, I just love the, mm -hmm. but this is more of a recency bias, I think, where I think where the, it's just because it's such a fun song, but I think the more it plays them, the more it'll move, um, still be a good song, but just not, maybe not my top, uh, Good Witch is second, just cause I love the opener and I just think it feels mm -hmm. like so whimsical, uh, Wendy's third, uh, Watch is fourth. History of the man, history of the man, history of man, history fifth. of man, <laughs> history of man, six. I'm so tired. I'm so sorry. Therapy <laughs> six, seven. Want you back. Eight. You're just a boy, and I'm kind of the man. Nine. Coming of age. Ten. Mm -hmm. There it goes. Eleven. BSC. Twelve. Run. Thirteen. Two weeks ago. Fourteen. Lost the breakup. And fifteen. Body better. Although. I would say that Body Better is above two weeks ago, and I'd probably say two weeks ago is also my fifteenth. I feel like that's yeah. fair. Yeah. I like your. I think, I think that's fair. 
I'm surprised that Band and I is first, but that's fun. <laughs> I, I honestly think it is just more of like a because it's fun, but then it will yeah. like I think as a couple more plays and stuff, it will um not that it will become not fun. It'll just become like <laughs> it'll get yeah. like it's like the kind of song that like gets old a little bit maybe i don't know like i feel like i like the band and i because for me it's very re- reminiscent and yeah. like i don't know but yeah i get i get it anyway so that we don't talk watch is your favorite yeah. i love watch watch is my second favorite so like same Iconic. um <laughs> i'm so excited for that live anyway so we don't talk for three hours we <laughs> have international dates of the Eras Tour, which were announced last week, which is so fun and so exciting and scary. <laughs> yeah, that is scary. Yeah. <sighs> but I, like, something that I've learned through the America dates is, like, if if you're not, like, a cat, a local, you know, mm-hmm. you're, you're Swifty, you're on Swifty social media, like, you'll get, you'll get tickets. I, I know that there's people who don't get tickets and it sucks. But it's like they're we're a family and like we'll make sure other people can go to tour, you know, Yeah. and we help each other. You know, there's things like heirs to a resale. There's there's people online matching people and figuring out, get giving away their tickets because they know that people need them. There's companies doing giveaways. There is if you don't get tickets and it is going to be a challenge to get tickets but if you don't get tickets it is not oh my god i'm not going <laughs> and yeah. and i know that very well because i want to give away <laughs> to go to the heirs tour and i thought i wasn't going and i was very like okay whatever i'm not going it doesn't matter i it's fine and then now i i had an opportunity to go because i just entered a giveaway on a whim and i won <laughs> That and was an amazing moment. which is which is an amazing moment and very lucky on my part but i i don't doubt like you have to dodge twitter loops and stuff but if you are like i said if you're a swifty the swifty community is there for you um so don't worry so much i try to get tickets obviously there's a shit ton of people registering for these pre-sales because <sighs> taylor has become not just like someone people are fans of but like a TikTok trend yeah. and someone people think that they can make money off of and all this stuff and it's like I miss Loverfest <laughs> 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 I miss Loverfest when the tickets didn't sell out until like a few weeks after they went on sale and you had time to think about oh do I want to get a lower level ticket or a floor seat or what do I want? Yeah. <laughs> it's no just but now you just go in and click, click, click. And, <laughs> yeah. and then you, you think after, be like, oh shit, I got this seat and I don't want to sit there. <laughs> it, yeah. It, uh, like a couple things to like quickly catch up on. If you want to hear about Ray's um, experience, episode three of the podcast, um, the whole mm-hmm. um, people signing up, there was apparently 7.8 million people registered for UK. uk shows and that was yesterday um and according to numbers it was only like 2.9 million that were actually from the uk um Insane. and to quickly go back just so i can make a tiktok out of this um the taylor swift <laughs> dear john comment and i'm still seeing people being like who cares i'm still going to make a comment or i'm still going to do this and oh that. taylor's actually they can not to fuck off you can fuck off genuinely because like stop being i so i think that the jake gyllenhaal stuff in the red i think the reason why she's saying that is because of what happened with jake gyllenhaal with red is like it went a bit too far people weren't talking about how this is her album and this is her work and she gets to own it they were talking about him Mm -hmm. and it's like who gives a shit about him yeah like (laughs) why would we give him any more attention and yeah, like Dear John's obviously about John Mayer, and we're talking about it now because Taylor Swift brought it up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, we're totally so like. Anyway, <laughs> that's it. I yeah yeah that's it. Just just don't just be respectful. Um, be respectful. Talking to you it might be yeah. a joke for people, but it's just it's not funny. Like this is her album. She finally gets to 
she's written it all she finally gets to like fully say she owns it and oh that's such an important moment it's like yeah. she owns her self-written album like that's that crazy. is a huge thing and people should be focusing on that and we will be focusing that on july 7th when yeah. we will do a track by track for speak now just like we just did for and the it's good going Witch. to be amazing cannot wait <laughs> i'm so excited um so exciting um sorry but yeah back to international i just to go on a tangent <laughs> um so, so on the 20th of june, june which we kind of did think it was happening we didn't say anything on the podcast because we didn't want to say something and it not be the case um yeah but there was rumblings and there it, are lots of rumors yeah. lots of rumors for that so we we kind of figured that's why we were like if there's an announcement yeah. <laughs> we didn't talk about it because we were like oh no <laughs> was so many dates announced um all in yeah. 2024 from really exciting February to august yep um, yeah February to august japan australia singapore paris Bunch of europe and the uk yeah uk Edinburgh, Scotland got love, which never happens. Um, Liverpool, Scream. Cardiff, Dublin, London, and then Italy and Germany and everything. Two two sets of dates yeah. in London. So we've got two sets in June and then two sets in August. Which is fun. Yeah. I I'm I feel like the UK got a lot of dates, which is exciting. I, I think I I hate the discourse online of like Americans don't come to my show like yeah okay send me hate but I am gonna be trying for UK tour tickets I went to a show in the US yes I have no idea where I will be at in my life in a year um mm-hmm. but I also have a partner who lives in the UK um and may still be living there next year at this time and i might as well go visit him i have a place to stay and i might as well get to see taylor at the same time if i can and i'm sorry to all the uk fans who are like oh my god oh my god oh my god you would have you would rather have me sitting next to you (laughs) than some local you went to high school with who bullied you for taylor for liking taylor swift like that is pretty much it like be serious (laughs) and like people that are being like that to to people that have maybe seen one show or not seen at all yeah i don't get that it like sucks. i get it. it's the people that have been like to like four shows or more and are like oh yeah well i've not had a chance to see it so like properly so i want to go and it's like no you have had the chance you've had three four shows like i get yeah going for it and everybody wants to see taylor as much as they possibly can but just and it's also it's like hard. i i know people who haven't had a chance to see taylor and they live in the u.s or canada and they're trying for european dates that's okay and they've been they've been big fans of taylor forever and that's okay and i've been to a show and i'm trying to but i've been a big fan of taylor forever but if you're like a freaking local and you're planning a european holiday around taylor swift for your tiktok then fuck you (laughs) and like uh, and getting like, I, onto the local thing it, there's been so many in the bully thing and everything like that there has been it's so funny because she does obviously announce this and the amount of people that i so i have like an old instagram um yeah. of like skill people and not even just skill people but just people in general and it's so funny to see how many people weren't swifties but are now swifties because the tour is here i hate it and oh it's my so God, awkward because you used it. to get so much comments and bullies about it all and ugh. I don't like it. It annoys me. I'm not me, one to gatekeep, but... but like it is hard when you like I'm fought about her I, for so long. And people... I want Taylor Swift to be cancelled for something really stupid so that we can stand her and everyone else can go the fuck away. Like, genuinely. Like, not like, I don't want her to do something extremely problematic, yeah, yeah, yeah. but like something stupid. <laughs> Well, like the Ariana Grande, like that, that, donut lick that, or something. Like yeah, that. like that 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 normies will start hating her, and we could still be fans. I just I just need them to go. I need them to shut up just and go tour. away. <laughs> I need I need the hype to die down like now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's it about tour. Today was actually the Australia Amex presale. Yeah. Um, and I was reading stuff on Twitter from people who were trying to get tickets and a bunch of people I saw got getting tickets. So that's really exciting. And I think Australia has a law where you can't resell tickets for more than 110% of its value. Okay. So 
I think that that is That's good. so... I think everywhere in the world needs that. Like, genuinely, because I see fans getting tickets. They're all getting tickets yeah. because scalpers aren't trying because they know that they can't make money off of it anyway. So it's the fans trying to get the tickets and they're getting them. And that's really exciting. And I wish that they did that everywhere. <laughs> I feel like if it doesn't, if more things happen with these releases and stuff, it, and once everything's kind of settled in the US in terms of like the Ticketmaster stuff, something needs to be put in place. Like it's just oh hundred percent, like, it's so bad. It can't I keep I happening. I don't I I wish I need the government to do something about it because it sucks. It's it's like concerts are experiences and they're things that you do. They help you grow and develop and they help you, you know, all of this stuff. And it's just like, it shouldn't be gatekeeped for money at all like that. It just shouldn't. It's not like that's the market value of this concert. Yeah. Like thousands of dollars that people are selling. That's not the market value of it. Like Taylor's selling it for a few hundred bucks. Like that's how much you should buy it for. And that's just it. And anyway, it just sucks. But I, I think that's enough international date talk yeah. we will definitely talk about it if we get tickets or not and we might be crying on the podcast so. <laughs> that would be mm, two weeks <laughs> time but um again midnight's pre if you had it before 10th of july monday uh, for london 11th of july tuesday for edinburgh 12th of july wednesday for cardiff and dublin and um, we still don't know the support um except from sabrina extending and doing a couple more days mm -hmm. um we still don't know um there was maze theories and stuff but it's not lined up how we thought it would line up so we don't really know what's happening yet but we'll find out maybe possibly like ne this month ne like july the end of july maybe possibly later hopefully mm -hmm. i'm really excited for that i i think sabrina i think the people who are theorizing maze might be right but i don't think that anything's been confirmed because yeah if anything has like there might be in talks with Maisie, but Maisie is gonna have a number one album True. and if she wanted to boost her streams for the good witch she would announce it now she would tell like she would have announced it when taylor announced it so everyone would have streamed her album who are swifties but they they didn't so obviously it's still not confirmed they're looking f there's there's some reason why it hasn't been announced and we don't know like we have no idea we're not behind the scenes but when it is announced we will be talking about it so be sure to subscribe to the podcast yes do so. <laughs> i have to quickly sneak this in the day the international dates were announced gracie abrams hq like the whole like pr like yes, management yeah. team thing put like a like a question like a emoji with like the finger over its mouth and there was a big like burst being like, oh my god, is Gracie gonna do UK dates? But we still don't know. So we, once we find out, we will. Um, it might be like but, there's they're fine. Like maybe Gracie's confirmed, and then like they're trying to they need a out. second opener, and so they're still trying to figure that out. I don't know. Excited, but I would, I would kind of be upset if Gracie did it again. Would I cannot make you do it. Would you not have like imagine I mean, Maisie and Gracie? Oh okay, my if it was Maisie and Gracie, but I feel like Maisie and Gracie are similar level so who would be first and who would be second opener like they have they just they have go on at the same audience. time oh no that's too chaotic of like to me students. it's one or the one or the other i i feel like both maybe the last thing that we have to talk about is <laughs> olivia rodrigo announced her second album it's called guts yes. which is fun i see a lot of people on twitter complaining that oh my god she's still using the purple aesthetic eye roll <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah well, shut up we also don't People know are so, what's happening we don't we don't know anything had happened but also like shut up who who cares if she's still using the purple aesthetic who cares if it still feels like sour or like she reused everything i feel like people think like taylor taylor oh taylor reinvented herself every era because that's what she felt she had to do but it doesn't i feel like having a cohesive brand is also good there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Did people not realize that the color purple was invented when Olivia Rodrigo released Sour? So true. So true. So we have, <laughs> um, so a couple, like, not PR packages, but, like, uh, T-shirts and stuff were being sent to fans. 
over the last couple of weeks and they all had like um either a blood letters. sucker tea um and then or like another tea and letters um in purple um and they all like kind of were getting released and like getting try to figure out who what it said and stuff and we had a collection of them i did have them up but i've also just like completely like lost them but it was um <laughs> the whole theory was it was going to spell oh there you go so it was u p l g i s r l t s u so we did think it was going to be like spill your guts um yeah i saw that but then so obviously we know that the album's called guts but there is a theory that the tour might be called like spill your guts tour or something or there's something more to do with it um we will probably find out more um when the because the single comes out in four days most likely getting a music video and i still think the red theme is going to be very like going to play a lot into it because we have for it a, for guts releasing we had a bunch of vinyl drops today we had um a purple vinyl mm -hmm. we had a red vinyl we had a white yeah. vinyl and we had a blue vinyl um yeah so the red's obviously still going to play into it um but who mm -hmm. knows she might just do this theme where she has these purple album covers but then like i think that would be cool honestly like it's something different and she gets she's big enough that she gets to do that and she doesn't have to like worry about what's conventional yeah. or whatever to like have this whole new era like she can have something that's cohesive and i think that's pretty cool and exciting and i don't think that people should be comparing her to taylor like or no. whatever they're doing swifties love to hate and it's like fuck off like let women be yeah. successful I, I just love the the purple on this album has changed a little bit it's more like a deeper darker purple which i think gives the album a more mature feel like it's yeah kinda like... and like the fact that like in like in all the things her lips are red yeah um I think that that's like a really nice touch and it just like yeah it makes it makes it look like more mature and i think that's exciting and i it's like an older version of sour like that's literally it and that's cool and exciting and i think that i'm excited and i'm excited to hear vampire next week we will talk about it next week so tune in next week yes check out twitter check, we, we really need to get better using our twitter and stuff TikTok i know i i should posted, but um i should be better at using the twitter but i'm really bad at it um <laughs> we'll find so i will get on that we will find our we'll find it funny. Find TikTok i will anytime i have thoughts i tweet on my main and then i'm like oh <laughs> yeah one oops. we need to get it collectively <laughs> like being like okay maybe we should tweet like blah 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 but we will get there um discord mm -hmm. join the discord it's been a long episode so yeah. thanks for sticking with us this long it's it was exciting and fun, and we will see you guys next week. Yeah. Bye. Bye.